Good morning and welcome to our worship together this morning. It's so good to be with you as we gather together online. My name is David and I am one of the team here at the First Parishes. And it's great to be worshipping together this morning, even when we can't gather together physically to worship. Now, I don't know about you, but it's quite cold at the moment, isn't it? So I've got about five layers on at the moment. Um, so hopefully you are nice and warm this morning and not feeling too chilly and that you've adapted um, to the wintry weather that we've been experiencing. I've been out and about today doing a few deliveries and it's been quite snowy underfoot. So hopefully we're all kept safe and we're keeping warm. So during our service, kind of do join in in the chats, in the comments, um, however you can. Um, let us know that you're there. We want to try and interact with you as best we can. We really miss not being able just to have conversations with people face to face, not being able to share a cup of coffee, not being able to share life together. So do please interact with these services as best as you can. And then if you're able to join us on Zoom afterwards um, for some time of fellowship and sharing together and getting to know one another more. And if you need any help getting onto Zoom, then please do get in touch with the team. We'd love to equip you and help you to get online. So will you pray with me this morning as we pray for each other, as we pray for those of us who are joining online, as we pray for those who are not able to join us online, but are joining us in prayer and in spirits. So let us hold one another in prayer this morning. So pray with me. Father God, we pray that you will come and dwell with us richly this morning, wherever we may be, however we are joining in our community's worship. May we know your Holy Spirit afresh in our lives. May we know you at work. May we know your voice. So we pray, come Lord Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. You are so welcome. Come and dwell with us this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. So faithful one, whose, words, whose word is life, Come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our hearts and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now I'm going to light our candles this morning as a reminder for us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Maybe another lockdown feels a bit like the darkness closing back in. Maybe the dark winter nights are making you just feel that bit gloomy. Maybe there are struggles and trials in your life and the darkness just feels tight around you. Well, we light our candle as a reminder and as a symbol of hope that Jesus is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench, a light which pushes back that darkness. And that's the hope that we hold on to as we worship together, as we seek God. So let's join me in praying with the church around the world in the collect prayer. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives. Make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now will you join us as we sing together this morning, Lord, you have my heart.
as you show your face, we'll see your glory here. search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. sing of love come down and as you show your face we'll see your glory And now we're going to hear our Bible reading this morning from 1 Samuel. Our reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realised that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I wonder, how good are we at listening? I'm sure some of us have been enjoying listening to the cricket this week, although I'm recording this only after the first day. So the first day has gone well, so we'll see how we go. Maybe you've been listening to the news, the TV. Maybe you've been listening to the rain and the sleet. Or maybe you live close enough to the main roads or the railway lines to hear the lorries and the trains 
as they go past, that gentle hum or rumble. I think one of the things that the lockdowns we've had and the experience that, the experience that they brought us is a quietness, a stillness. I remember during the first lockdown, going for a walk over one of the bridges on the A19 and looking down and it just being silent. Not a vehicle in sight. Not even kind of the distant rumble of one coming towards us. It was just still. And when we find those points of stillness, listening can be quite easy. But equally, in the rumble of life, when the pressures and strains of lockdowns hit, listening and finding space to listen can be hard. We end up with lots of things running around our minds and the stresses and strains of life feeling like they're pressing down on us, making it hard for us to hear voices of encouragement, compassion and care. But equally, I know that for some of us, lockdowns have been great times of of pressing into God, of spending time with him, seeking him and listening. And then for others of us, it's been really hard as our patterns of life and the stresses that we've faced, that kind of that change overnight and the suddenness of it all, it's made it really hard for us to feel connected to God. And it's made for us hard to hear his still and gentle voice. Now, in the time of Eli and Samuel, we read that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And that wasn't because God couldn't speak or didn't care or didn't want to speak. But as I think this is a great way that I've read this week of of, of how it's been phrased. Because it was his, because God's foolishness is always wiser than human wisdom. Isn't that a wonderful saying? That God's foolishness It's always wiser than human wisdom. And that's saying that the people of the time, they saw themselves as wise and not in need of the Lord. They saw that their own strength and their own thought processes there, they were relying on themselves and not relying on God. But that didn't mean that the voice of God had been forgotten. There was still a longing for God to be at work from at least some. And Eli was one of them. And now Eli had his failings. He'd messed up. He'd done wrong. His sons had rejected God and blasphemed. But despite all of this, despite Eli being old and blind, despite him no longer being in control, he still recognised the source and the method of the call that Samuel was receiving. He still knew the voice and the sign that Samuel was hearing. He, sorry, he still knew the voice and the signs that Samuel was receiving through that voice. And Samuel was hearing God, even when Eli was struggling to. Samuel was hearing God, but not knowing it was God. But Eli was there to direct him to steer him, to guide him. Now Samuel was this this young boy, he was untaught, he was unaware, but he was obedient. He heard the voice and he wanted to be attentive to his father-like figure of Eli. And even in the early hours of the morning, which I think is a pretty miraculous thing, I'm not always the most attentive in the early hours of the morning. And we then see this process of here I am. And the response from Eli, I did not call. You go back to bed. And Samuel hearing, Samuel, again. And him getting up and going to Eli. Here I am, Eli. Eli saying, I did not call you. Go back to bed. And the Lord calling Samuel that third time. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel getting up and going to Eli saying, here I am, Eli. And Eli looking, I like to imagine at this point, Eli looks at him inquisitively, almost kind of cranking his head to the side and saying, go and lie down. And if he calls you again, say, here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. Now, 
Now where our reading is ending, it's setting the scene for the new things in Israel which God will do. And it will begin with the word. Initially misunderstood, but finally unmistakable. And a gentle, repeated call, demanding that Samuel first listen and then speak. That rhythm of costly obedience, learnt in a night and sustained for a lifetime. It set a pattern for Samuel's ministry to come, for his prophetic ministry as a prophet of Israel. And it equally sets a pattern for us now of prophetic ministry. Maybe we feel that the voice of God has been quiet and that we want to spend time listening to him. Then maybe then in this next lockdown, where can we make space for God? Where can we make space to pray, to read his word, to seek and listen for his voice? Maybe if we're finding the lockdown quite a stressful experience, maybe we could try and set aside some time just to rest in God's peace. Put on some worship music. Read an encouraging passage of scripture and rest in God's peace. Because God wants to speak with us. He wants to be in relationship with us. Because God wants to speak to his children. And we are his children. And because we are his children, we are able to hear his voice. As a child can hear his father's voice. So we can hear our father's voice. And we see throughout scripture that God spoke to Abraham, to Jacob, to Moses. He spoke to Moses through a burning bush, to Gideon through a fleece, to Joseph through dreams. He spoke to Samuel in the temple in the night. And then in the New Testament, we see in Acts, a church which was dynamically led by the voice of God. The only qualification we need to hear the voice of God is to know him as our father. And God doesn't want to shout at us. He doesn't want to stand distantly heckling us. He wants to whisper to us intimately. And the way he speaks isn't always the way that maybe we think that he speaks. He speaks through the ordinary, through the everyday things that we know and understand. And I know that when I'm trying to listen to God, I say, I ask the Lord, is, is that you? Or is it just me? But I've learned over time that it's better to share with others maybe what I think God has been saying. Because it can change people's lives. One of a, a great uh, teacher who I spent a lot of time um, listening to growing up, he used to say that when we listen for the voice of God, and if we think that we've heard something from God for someone, then we should share it. If it's affirming, if it holds up with what we know of God in scripture, then share it. Because no one's going to die if we share it. And that's always kind of stuck with me that actually, okay, we're, we can be bold in sharing this with people because it can be really life transforming. And we can all hear God's voice because we know that Jesus speaks today. And he speaks in us and through us and through his church to each other and to the nation. And God's word, it brings healing. It brings affirmation. It brings restoration. And listening to God isn't just for church leaders or biblical characters. It is for all of us in all aspects of life, not just in church. Even while, while our buildings are shut, God is still speaking and still working. So let us all keep on pressing into him and saying, Lord, speak to us. Give us your wisdom, guide us and lead us. So during this lockdown, maybe let's try and seek him with a fresh heart. Listen for his loving voice, knowing that he is calling to us. For some of us, that might look like just sitting down with our Bibles and reading and seeing what stands out to us. And as we're doing that, just praying, Lord, speak to me for what I read. Reveal more of yourself to me. Maybe for others of us, there are things pressing on our hearts that we want to 
intercede for others for or intercede for ourselves for. I just want to say, Lord, speak to us. Give us wisdom on this matter. And if you feel like God is saying something to you for someone else, if it is affirming and encouraging, then share it with them. Or if you want someone to journey with as you discern God, then do get in touch with one of the staff team and we'd love to pray with you. God longs to speak to us. He longs for us to know his voice and to know his call so that we can grow deeper in our relationships with him. Amen. So now George and Alison are going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Our prayers seek to bring today's message of listening to God into our intercessions for the world in which we live and work and play. So the call and response today are, I will say the call to us, which is God comes and stands before us. The suggested response is speak, Lord, I am your servant. I am ready to listen. God comes and stands before us. Speak, Lord, I am your servant. I am ready to listen. Lord, we seek to bring to you our thoughts and concerns about the COVID pandemic. It has and is rewriting the rule book by which we live. Not only do we miss so much, we find that we have to change and put in extra energies just to get by. The irony is we are doing so much less or it is at least less varied and our lives can be quite monotonous. Lord, we need to stop doing even that and seek your presence. God comes and stands before us. Speak, Lord, I am your servant. I am ready to listen. Lord, thank you for those that lead us. We acknowledge that we expect so much from them and are so free at telling them what they should be doing. We just want action. We just want things to be so that we can do what we want to do. Lord, we all need to stop doing and seek your presence. God comes and stands before us. Speak, Lord, I am your servant. I am ready to listen. Lord, we hear the words, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yet at this time, we are rethinking what we value and give concern for. Particularly we think of those suffering with COVID in their homes, and in intensive care. Those whose treatment for their illnesses has been put on the back burner. The helpless are rather those not receiving necessary assistance. The destitute, deprived, penniless, those lacking resources. Loving Lord, we need you to enter our world. God comes and stands before us. Speak, Lord, I am your servant. I am ready to listen. Lord, in these days of lockdown, isolation and separation, we need your spirit to guide and motivate us. We really don't want to give up and retreat. We need to trust and know that you are out there before we even open our front doors. God comes and stands before us. Speak, Lord, I am your servant. I am ready to listen. So merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we bring all of our prayers together.
as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And before our final blessing today, I just want to share some notices with you. So as I've already said, we are continuing to worship online during this lockdown. So do join us again on our online platforms at 10.15 next Sunday morning. Be great to have you with us. And do join us straight after this service on Zoom. The details will be appearing on the screen um, for a cup of coffee. Um, we'd love to spend time hanging out with you and getting to know you and chatting. And we've got a, something coming up for you this week called Virtually a Pianist. Um, our great friend Rob has recorded for us some songs and stories um, to help us um, through lockdown. So do join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Facebook, the YouTube and the websites. And that will be there for you to enjoy. And then equally, you'll be able to access it on Catch Up um, via Facebook and YouTube. Our small groups are about to, about to start back, so watch out for a message from your small group leader if your group hasn't yet started or they've not yet been in touch. Um, and if you'd like to join a small group, um, then the perfect opportunity to join a small group is coming up. Um, Lent is starting in a few weeks' time, um, so we, if you want to join a small group for Lent, um, you'd be really welcome. Um, so do get in touch with one of the team via email, phone or Facebook, um, and we'd love to connect you in to a small group this Lent. And then put this date in your diary, the 26th of January at 7 p.m. Join us on Zoom for the church prayer meeting. Um, we'd love you to join us as we pray together and as we seek God and listen to God together as a church family for this year to come. And as always, please do keep in touch with one another and check out the website and the Facebook page for regular updates. We've just posted out um, a letter to those who aren't online. And with that, we sent them an updated copy of our spiritual resources booklet. And we're going to be emailing out today a digital copy of that booklet for anyone who might find it useful. But if you know someone who would like a printed copy but hasn't got one, do let us know because we, we can run off a few more and we've got a few spares as well. Um, so we'd love to pass that resource on to anyone who would appreciate it. So now receive this final blessing as we go. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So it'll be great to see you on Zoom for a cup of coffee. So take care and God bless. Sacred